Hello, welcome to another episode on Glamour Diary. My name is Mesudesin and I remain your humble host. <laughs> all right, I hope you all had a wonderful Easter celebration to all my Christian folks listening to me right now. And how was your Easter celebration, by the way? Well, 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 you can drop that in the comment section. Let's continue. I have a pretty guest in the studio with me today, and I'm so excited because she's also a female. I've been having female back to back, you know? Mm. You know as it is, I always in my mind. However, I want to say thank you to all of you who have been dedicated to watching our show. And we promise to bring you the very best of the very best in the entertainment sector. I have the beautiful Anyao Adora Sandra in the studio today. Make welcome. <laughs> You're welcome, Sandra. Thank you. Thank so you how so may much. I address you? Sandra or Adora? I'd rather be called Adora. Oh, yeah. I love Adora. <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing it Adora. Yeah, All right. I have Adora in the studio and I'm excited. Guess what? Adora is a screenwriter. Hmm. She's a producer and she has written more than enough scripts. She has also produced a lot of movies. She is a nominee for the AMVCA for guess what category? Screenplay. All right. Those of you that are watching us, ensure you cast your vote for her. Because if you have not watched the movie, don't worry, I will not give you the gist now. Just stay tuned to the end of the show so that you get the full gist and know the movie that is dominated for, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adara, you're welcome. Thank you. I love Thank your you. hair. So what Ooh. inspired this hairdo? Hmm, I just copied it from... <laughs> <laughs> I just picked it off the internet. I liked it. So oh, and it's pretty. Me. Maybe Thank I'll you. do this next. Anticipate you'll see my own <laughs> All right, Adora, can you give us a brief introduction about yourself and okay. what you do? Okay. My names are Anya Sandra Adora. I'm a screenwriter and a film producer. I have been working in Nollywood for like almost five years now. Wow. Yeah. Well, prior to Nollywood, I used to work in the banking industry. And I worked there for four and a half years. I quit in June 2021 to start doing film full time. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, I was doing, I started doing film professionally in 2020. Yeah. Okay. So my first um, film was a TV show for NVivo TV. NVivo TV is owned by Chioma Ude, the president of AFRIF. So um, it's, it was a show titled Side Chick. Mm -hmm. It was um, directed by Uche Jumbo. Wow. And it was it starred um, in Yedo, Larry Gaga and a couple of other big names too. So, yeah. Then on production, I have, I started producing in, professionally in, I would say, 2021, when I left my job, because then it afforded me time to um, now go on set. So, yeah, I've produced films for film for um, TV, and then um, cable TV. I have a f film or two on Showmax. Oh. I have some on YouTube. I've created um, web, some web series too, you know, so yeah, that's what oh, I've been up oh. to as a producer. Recently, I concluded um, the production. I was a producer on the Netflix license show, which should be um, released by mid this year. Oh, okay. Let me see, between like September, October, it should be out. Yeah. It's titled Rush and like, oh. yeah, so... Yeah. All yeah. right. So something I find intriguing is that you were once a banker. Yeah. How did you switch? Like that <laughs> banking industry is like, maybe they are just like one way. They are like, their mind is like this one way. Yeah. And then you don't switch to the entertainment industry. Like, can you gist us? How did it gist? happen? <laughs> yes. So how did it happen? <laughs> okay. Um. So prior to banking, I used to write a literature, a fiction blog called them um, tales of hearts i was posting romantic stories on instagram i also had a blog spot i had followers at the time not a lot but i had like close to 20k followers and it was organic i never advertised it anywhere so 20, um, oh, hold on please hold on please 20k and you say it's not a lot <laughs> One K people some... have like 200k <laughs> no no 20k is a lot 
<laughs> yeah, you're you are trying know? to be humble, I understand, but twenty no. k is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, um, basically, so, but even prior to that, my my degree is that's my bachelor's degree is in English and literature, yeah. and I studied that because I wanted to write. I've I've been writing since I was a child. Mm. It's something I've always been passionate about, mm. telling stories. But I never knew I was going to do movies. I thought I was going to be an author and publish mm. books. So. Yeah, but I stumbled on filmmaking in twenty during my service year. That was twenty sixteen slash twenty seventeen. A producer followed me on my. I don't know if it's appropriate to mention his name, but he's. You can just use the first initial of his name. <laughs> so he followed me, and um, I, I actually don't think it's a big deal. His name okay. is Donald Mokbe. He's my mentor. Okay. So he, but he's a very private person. That's why I, I was like, oh, okay. wondering if I should disclose so um he w- he reached out to me and then um, basically he mentored me through storytelling he liked the stories i was posting on my blog mm. i didn't even know that like somebody someone was, was read i didn't know someone important was actually <laughs> reading them so he liked the stories i was posting on my blog he reached out to me and then he started mentoring me so he basically taught me how to write screenplay mm. before i took some other courses and like he keeps pushing me so then from from him, I realized that I could actually stop waiting to get published and start writing films and publishing films. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Wow. Although I still hope to publish like books okay. going forward, but for now I'm doing films like, wow. and I'm enjoying it. So. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I love that story. Mm. Let me call it a story because everything's a story. Yes, I love it. Yeah. You know, one thing I liked out of everything you said is that. You were consistently writing. Is that is yes. you were pursuing your passion in writing? Yeah, even when I was banking. Yeah, yeah. I was just doing banking for the money, like, cause as an upcoming writer in Nigeria, you don't make a lot of money, mm-hmm. and so you do need to fend for yourself. Yeah. So I had a degree, so I was like, why don't I get a job that could afford to pay my bills while mm-hmm. doing this? So when my when my writing and my pro- producing started working out. So I had to make a choice, and I always I choose what I always wanted yeah, to do. So. Yeah, yeah. So those of you that have been looking away from your passion, like keep doing what you're doing, whatsoever you're doing that makes you happy, keep doing. It. Somebody out there is watching, just like yeah. she said, <laughs> she never knew a big producer was watching, yeah. and here she is today. So don't stop pursuing your passion. Don't stop pursuing your dreams. Keep doing what you love. That's all I'll just say. Wow, okay. that's that's really, really inspiring because there are people that will be watching this right now, probably have dreams in doing some certain things, but because of the situation they find themselves and they have to fend for them for themselves yes. and their families. So they'll just be like, let me settle down for this job. I'm uh-huh. paying my bills and then forget what they love doing. Yes. Because I feel if if you you didn't have that platform where you were writing. Yes. People would not have found that talent in you. Exactly. Yeah. You know? So wow. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So Thank can you. you tell us your school days, how it was like, <laughs> as, especially as an art student? Okay. Um, I would start from saying that my parents never really wanted me to do what ah. I'm doing. When I eventually decided to like make a choice because I couldn't I didn't have enough time to do my banking job and still write films. So I um had to quit. That was in June twenty twenty one and it was like my parents, it was like, they made my life a living hell. Mm. Even though I don't live with them, like, they used to call me, my mom call me, is this what you want to do with your life? You want to leave? I told them, like, okay, if I leave, it's like, if you leave and you're not earning a salary, then you start prostituting up and down with all the girls in Lagos. I'm, like, I'm not going to be a prostitute. Like, I've spent so many years, like, actually doing honest work. I'm not going to start doing something mm-hmm. else. And then she's like, oh, this, that, this, that, this, that. And I'm like, okay, if I don't have what to do, I will do Uber. Because like, <laughs> well, I'll just take my car and go and do Uber. Like, and she's like, oh, is that what you want to be doing? So we didn't talk for like weeks. Wow. Yeah, it was like a big deal. And then my father is like, um, my father was an accountant, but he's a lecturer now. So he's like an, an academic oh, person. My mom yeah. owns a school. So it's like, ah. you want to go and be doing on serious things. Like, you have to be doing serious mm-hmm. things. So, but like, um, I'm happy w- where we're at now because like, um, they finally accepted it. They are proud of it. They are like organizing a viewing with their friends at home Aww. for our family for now. <laughs> you know, whenever I have films on YouTube, she's like, send me the link. I'll send it to my friends. I'll tell them it's my daughter that did it. Aww. 
<laughs> you know, then the other day my father printed like um complimentary cards for me. So yeah. Whoa. But like <laughs> the hell, like even from when I was a child, when you write to my father, I would tear your book. Like, no, you're going to be a doctor because mm. they wanted me to be a doctor. Mm. So I don't know why they wanted me to be a doctor. Mm. Like, because I don't look like a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But is that a way doctors look like? Those are serious. <laughs> I've always been a playful person, so that doctoring thing, like, I don't know how they read it, but it wasn't correct. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Wow, wow, that was so, so, so nice. Now, I'm trying to think, while you were working in the bank and you were writing, how did you balance it up? Because writing Ooh. scripts, working in the bank, because I know bankers usually, especially those, I don't know the sector you worked in the bank. Mm. Probably maybe the educational the, sector. The educational sector yeah. of the bank. Okay, so how did you combine it with your um, well, script it was writing then? hectic because um, at some point, my actual job like yeah. started to suffer. And I'm going to explain with some details. Um, so I'll be in the office and I have deadlines to meet for scripts. And so instead of doing my office work, I'll be on my laptop. So life always presents you with choices and you always have to make a choice. Mm. So I could have either just chosen to do my work or chosen to do what I really wanted to do. Mm. And so, but I still always try to make, make up for it because at the end of the day, I might have delays, but I never really fell short in my job, mm. at my office job. Okay. So I remember there was a day I shot, I finished shooting a short film. I shot all night and then in the morning on Saturday, I was supposed to be at work. And normally I'm not supposed to go to work on that day. And so I remember I wore one of the costumers' costumes <laughs> and my hair was so rough. I tied scarf. Like, I hadn't slept for over 24 hours. And, like, I was just, like, in the office like this. Like, shining your eyes. Shining my <laughs> eyes. Like, you know, so, yeah. yeah. I've had, I had those days, like, you know, oh. where I had to, like, run out of work and lie that, oh, I want to go and do something. Then quickly run for a meeting mm. with one producer and... Run back, like if, even if I had to take Okada, like I had wow. those days, like you know. Wow, wow. Yeah. Can you see the price for pursuing your dream? It's not easy, actually. You know, a lot of times people make it seem easy, especially when you are now established and known. So mm. people that are looking up to you be like, like this thing go easy, but they don't know the sacrifice, the pain you had to go through mm. to get to where you are. I'm still sacrificing. <laughs> <laughs> so has yeah. script writing been generally? Because uh, if you ask me to write scripts, I say Najang Bajanti, I will give you because I know how to write no script. No. <laughs> um, for me, it's like because I naturally I'm more of a loner. You will not really find me with so many people a lot of times. Okay. I enjoy my own company most of the time, but okay. sometimes I still like crave human company. But like a large percentage of the time, yeah. I. If I stay with people for too long, I'll just start wanting to go and be on my Aww. own. Yeah. So, um, it's aff if it affords me, it's also, I think that trait comes with the ability to live in my head. Because when you're on your own, what do you do? Mm. You live in your head. Okay. So, then... Please, you need to explain this living in your head. Is it that you have parlor? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like living in your imaginations, like daydreaming. Okay. Yeah. So, like, while normal people are out there, just interacting and being normal human beings. Yeah. You would just rather be at home and be imagining unreal things. Oh. It's like slightly being slightly delusional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um <clears throat> so I think those traits made me like made writing the, the right choice of career for me. Because mm. I have very good imagination wow. and then I can sit down and write away for like days. Like Whoa. Yeah. so I, I actually enjoy the process, even though since I made it a job, like sometimes like, oh my God, like hundred pages. <laughs> mm. Because I have the fundamental love for it, like it's something I always enjoy doing. I just always try to pick stories that uh, I would I like. So if you bring a story to me and I don't really like it, now I'll be like, Oh, sorry, I'm busy, or I'll say something. How has it been surviving as a screenwriter? Because in my mind, I used to think screenwriter needs to earn more money, like <laughs> maybe um, other like directors, producers, the marketers, and all of that. Mm, so on the film production in Nollywood, yeah. the producers earn the most money mm -hmm. because it's their film. Yeah. It's they're, they're, they're the money people. If, so if you're an executive producer, you're the money person. Wow. If you're a producer, you're the one carrying out the project. You're like the project manager, sort of, okay. like, you know. Um, so they make more money, 
but um, the cinematographers make money, the directors make money, the writers make money too. Oh. It's just like every other profession. When you're starting out, you might not make enough money, money. which is why I had to take the banking job. Yeah. The screenwriters make money. There are screenwriters that are very paid, that are living large in Nigeria. Bro. Wow. Very well paid, you know. It's just um, you have to work your way there like every other profession. You don't start today and you start thinking that mm. you earn money, but you make just enough to get by okay. once you're good at what you do. You know? oh, wow. Yeah. And then a lot of writers that people see, oh, and say, oh, writers, writers. Some, um, and no shades, like um, some writers are not like properly trained in the art of writing. And so if you do not continue to advance your self and get training to put yourself on an international standard, then you find out that you continue to be mediocre and then you oh. continue to end mediocre fee. But if you are well read, then you can walk into anywhere or anybody can approach you and you'll be able to justify why you're charging a certain amount of money. So, All right. Yeah. Wow. So as a screenwriter, what's the least you have been paid? <laughs> I'm never going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> never. Uh, okay, so if I say what's the most you have been never, paid? Never. Never. <laughs> Never, I'll never answer that All question. right, all right. That's... I'm shooting myself in the foot. Okay, okay, yeah. we understand, we understand. Yeah. So, would you mind if you were approached to train people on screen, script writing? No, I wouldn't mind. Okay. Yeah, I'm still learning myself. I'm currently doing a course with the British Council. Okay. It's called Film Lab Africa. Oh. So, it's, it's a sort of, it's a 10 weeks training in filmmaking, storytelling included, production included, some primary cin cinematography, editing, but oh. well, basically storytelling and production. Oh. So, yeah, I, I'm still getting trained, but I can still train people. All right. Yeah. So what has the experience been so far in the academy? Mm. It's been nice. It's been interesting being selected to be a participant because they selected 60 people from Africa. Oh. So it was like a honor, like, <laughs> you oh. know. It's, I was also, I find myself um, lucky, so I'm grateful to God. Oh. So um, it's an intensive course. It's not for, it's not a beginner's course. It's sort of like an upgrade course. So um, it's been cool. I have colleagues that have been interesting. I have made friends on the program. I have um, made alliances on the program, and I have learned a lot from the program. Being taught by professionals from all around the world, including Hollywood, the British film industry, Nollywood here. Like, wow. it's just been a surreal experience, you know. So I'm grateful to God. All right. Let's talk about your projects, what you've done so far in the industry. Because I've seen that you've written a lot of scripts, you've featured yeah. in also writing a lot of scripts. Yeah. And I would like to talk about this one that is trending now. Okay. Before I talk about others. No, let's keep the best for the last. Yes, the best for the last. So let's talk about some of the scripts you have written, like okay. um, Side Chick. Yeah. Um, Mama's. Mama knows best. Mama for knows Olga. best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, can you tell us how it came about? How you got the inspiration to okay. even write? Because it's funny how I can just sit here and say, "Oh, you wrote a script," and in my head, I'm wondering, "How did you write that many episodes?" <laughs> because in some, in your bio, I saw for some uh, movies and some plays from your work, basically what you've done. I saw like 100 and something episodes, and I'm like, "Ah." Yeah, but well, that was development, though. Like, yeah. I was. The development executive, so yeah. I de I develop the stories. I don't write the scripts. Oh. I just develop the story. So even developing stories is not easy now. Yeah, that's where the work is. That's the actual work. Okay, can you just give us insights? Because inside my head, I'm wondering 100 and something episodes. Ah, want <laughs> Please tell us what it takes. So this is the the question is tell us how it was for you to even develop the story. You may not be the one that wrote that script, but yeah. how was it developing the story for a 100 and something episode okay. movie? Or, ah, it's a lot. <laughs> okay, so um, on two occasions, I was approached by a media house in Kotonou to develop TV shows, 100, daily TV shows, 104 episodes each. So the first one was an epic called... Um, Colady the Tragic King. Mm. It was contracted to my boss, the CEO of Mindworks. And so naturally being the project manager and being a screenwriter that works, that is contracted for the company, I had to hop on the project with mm. my boss. So how we do it is um, basically you have the summary of the story. 
and then which is usually like a one page or a two page and then we hold like a conference with some other writers where we decide what we want to do with the story wow. yeah <laughs> and the conference can last as long as like one week more physical camps in an apartment mm. fed breakfast lunch and dinner mm. <laughs> you know sometimes we document the processes um digitally oh, via okay. video pictures and so um so people are throwing ideas around and you're p- basically picking the ones mm-hmm. that work and documenting them so um so at the end of your development you have broken your story into okay this is what will happen in episode one mm-hmm. this will be the cliffhanger this is what will happen in episode two this will wow. be the cliffhanger so that's what basically what development is mm-hmm. and so then the screenwriter takes what you have summarized mm-hmm. and goes and breaks it down into sometimes if the script writer is lucky you might have done it into scenes mm-hmm. like but they will still have to go and make sure that what you have arrange done flows and, and they'll arrange it and they'll start to write the dialogue and put in wow. the creativity of saying okay he walks in he sits down he stands up he slaps her he squeezes his face wow. you, so yeah. yeah do you even have a social life with all these <laughs> kind of things that you do yeah, I do because it's fun. It's fun. yeah, and people like do it with that yeah. fun too. So yeah, because it's not my field. It's not, it doesn't look fun to me because ah, I'll sit down and write and write and write. I'll get ah, you tired. You write, don't worry. Hey, you write. In fact, when I was doing one of them, when I was apportioned um some part of one of them to do, for it was my sister's wedding. It was in April last year. So I was at my sister's wedding reception, chica, and like I was like writing on because I couldn't go with my laptop. I was just noting down okay this is so like when i go home the next day i had to like type out everything i was doing because i was on a deadline so yeah like it's a lot of work for mm. if you enjoy doing it you're going to like it if you don't enjoy doing it don't bother <laughs> ah. yeah wow. so as a script writer are there challenges that comes with your job yeah um sometimes you don't feel like doing anything like Sometimes your brain just wants to play. And Justin Bieber's song will now come to play. So they don't, don't, don't feel like, like to win anything. Oh. Yo, so it's very hard on those days oh. to do things when, to work when you don't feel like working because you do need some level of inspiration to yeah. do that job, you know. Um, That's number one. Number two, Nigeria can happen to you like, mm. Nigeria is happening to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> like to everybody, yeah. You know, like, I have to, my laptop charger is bad. It's a Lenovo laptop. So I've been trying to buy the charger and it's apparently the charger for that laptop is not common. Oh. So like I have been reaching out to different vendors. Oh. Like the last time I tried buying the charger, somebody almost swindled me. Oh. Like, so yeah, like that's part of Nigeria happening to you. Then mm. there are times you wake up and there's no light. You need to charge your laptop to mm. work. So you have to like go somewhere. And the days you don't feel like going anywhere, you rely on your solar um, inverter, for example, and then there are days that it rains, so you don't even get um, wow. electricity. You have to rely on your generator, and then if there's full scarcity, like, so Nigeria always, like, interferes. <laughs> if you have money, Nigeria will still interfere with mm-hmm. your, you know, so, yeah. Wow. So let's talk about your latest projects that I'm seeing online. I don't know if it's your latest, so, but... In my head, it's the latest one because I'm seeing it online. Okay. Afa Me Funa. Yeah. Yes. How was it like working on that job? Job, okay. Um, that particular pro- um, project, not just the script, the entire project is a project that I was passionate about. Oh. I followed both like professionally, friend-wise. I used to pray for the project. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So, because um, the first day I got invited by Common Niger to the story development workshop, we were about five writers with wow. the, the director, Kaya De Kassum. And so, we were to develop the story. And so, like, when we, ha- when we finished addressing what we had to do, I just knew that, okay, this story is really good and it's unique. And, like, I knew I had to give it my best. Mm. Coupled with the fact that some some writer had um, written, like, a draft before. But the company, for some reason, they didn't like it. Mm. I never saw the draft. 
And in defense to that writer, it doesn't necessarily mean that the writer is not good. It might just yeah. be that what he has written is not in line with, with what the vision have. of what they want yeah. to do. But I never saw it, so I cannot really tell. I'm just talking professionally. So I then I was double burdened because now somebody has done it and they didn't like it. Now I have to like do the one mm. that they like, you know. So um, I was there with um, Mr. Kasum, the director, Mr. Kenny Joseph, Mr. Yinka Ogun, the story consultants, and then um, Mr. Kenne, the co-producer, Mr. Bio, the producer, yeah, were there. And we had several sessions, like, you know, to, so that story, I'm glad everyone liked it because, like, we had lots, several sessions, like, trying to make it unique, make it interesting, make it nostalgic, make it work. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm glad. And so after after we had our sessions, I wrote a treatment. I wrote, this, I think, like a 16-page treatment. And um, I sent it over. They had corrections. I made corrections. And when they were satisfied, I did a bit sheet. A bit sheet is the breakdown of your scenes into acts, oh. act one, act two, act three. So I did a bit sheet. They made corrections. They liked it. And I went and did the script. They liked it. They had some corrections. I, I think I corrected it two or three times before it went okay. into production. So the script that went into production was about 124 pages of script. Yeah, and the director delivered. Like, when I saw the first cut, I was, like, proud of it. Wow. Yeah, so I'm happy. I thank God. <sighs> <laughs> it actually takes a lot yeah. to write scripts. Like, yeah. <laughs> Maybe because I'm a lazy writer. <laughs> mm. You can try it. You can never know, like, until you try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can just see the level of work that is being put into what you do. Yeah. You know? Wow. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> All right. When you're working on a project as a script writer, what are those things you put into consideration? Okay. First of all, when you approach me, I try to know... Um, what platform you're making the film for. Oh. That would determine a lot of things. It would determine the, what kind of story you want to tell, how scaled it can be. Like if you're making a film, for example, for Yoruko TV or African Magic, I cannot give you a script that involves jumping off Todd Midland Bridge, for example. Oh, okay. Or involves like throwing like a big party. Yeah. Because then when you spend so much money making that film, you might not be able to make it back distributing it on those platforms mm. because um, the fees are different. But when you're making a film, a film for like an international platform or a platform that pays for big budget projects, then I know the kind of story I can give you. That's first. Secondly, I do not like to tell negative stories. I don't like to... So that is not, that is not to say that like you will not see my story and find the villain. In Afamifna, for example, Paul was a a villain, like it was a negative character. So I do have villains in my story. But the I'm I'm referring to the central message. Yeah. It has to always like be positive because I'm all for using the arts to spread positivity. Because I believe that people use the arts to spread a lot of negativity. A for lot. Example, like growing up, it yeah, was so much. It was so negative. You make scary films. People cannot sleep at night. I like horror films, don't get me wrong, but like... um. You're not even taking any lesson away at the end yeah. of the day. Like, you know, then you go to the music industry, some of them, the lyrics are so vulgar. Yeah. Like, it's, it's all so negative. Sometimes spreading hate, like, oh, if you pull up on me, I'm going to shoot you. Like, I don't like, I might listen to them in real life, but I would not like to be associated with okay. creating an art like that. So, um, I think last year or last two years, for example, someone approached me. They wanted to tell the story about a man that beats his wife and then. Um, he beat his wife for so many years and then at last she now forgave him. So, and then I now asked him that, okay, I'm all for forgiveness. Forgiveness is a positive message. Yeah. But like, before she forgives him, like, we have to genuinely see a change in yes. this guy. Like, wow. so the, 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 the route he wanted to go with the story was not the route I wanted to take. So I politely turned down the job and I'm sure the producer found, found someone else that yeah. would work in line with their vision. So, yeah, I, I like positive stories, stories that spread good vibes, yeah. Then, yeah, I think those are the two major things I consider. Then the time frame, if you give me a time frame that is not convenient for me, I will not take the job because oh, I don't want to choke okay. myself. 
here and then obviously the fee like if you pay if you if you don't if you're not ready to pay me my my money's what then i might not because w- what happens is you say oh okay i really like the story let me take the job and then halfway into it you're just regretting why did i even yeah. take this by the time you write 40 pages you'll be, i'm tired <laughs> the money has finished <laughs> so no i don't mm. i don't do that adora yeah so in the nollywood movie industry Mm-hmm. What changes have you observed, you know, before you came into the industry and now that you're in the industry, have you seen significant changes and all of that, mm. especially as regards to your field? Yes. So um, when I came in, Nollywood was just, I would say, getting into this new era where people are trying to tell better stories because mm. I think everyone can agree with the fact that we now have like 70% of the technical processes. Like, you watch a Nollywood film now, the picture is clear. Yes. <laughs> the sound is good. And the stories yeah. are nice. Because before yeah. now, if you are watching a movie, you already know who, who would marry who. Yeah. Like, like I just know. If yes. I start from the beginning, I'm like, oh, now this guy go marry this guy. Yes. I don't see this movie. Like, but right now, there are a lot of twists to yeah. the story, yeah, the it's plot because, yeah. and everything. I'm like enjoying this new yeah. Gen Z. But let me hear from you. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So gone are the days when people used to, they would just say, oh, writer, come, go and write the story. And that is not to say that a, a writer cannot write a script alone. A writer can write a script alone if you have years to work on it. Mm. That's why when you listen to some Hollywood writers, they tell you that, oh, I wrote this script for like 10 years. I what? Wrote this, yeah. The guy that made them um, Avatar had his was working on the story for like almost. Do you understand? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Even Stranger Things. When I saw their first pitch deck for Stranger Things, it was like in the nineties. I was a child, and Stranger Things just got made. Like everyone knows Stranger Things on Netflix, the series, you know. So um, um, so gone are those days in Hollywood, you know, because if you're going to do a story alone, then you need time to do it, go sit down, think about it. I remember, like, this is like a creative process. You cannot force mm-hmm. it. It comes to you when it comes to you. Yeah. You can try to stimulate your mind by saying, oh, let me go to the beach, let me go and have fun. When I clear my brain, maybe I'll have an idea. But you cannot really force ideas to come to you. It's a natural process. I don't know how to ex- explain it to you, yeah. you know. So, um... So because you don't have that luxury of time, you're giving a script, you're expected to deliver in like two months, three months. That's plus development, plus mm-hmm. um, first draft. So you have to create like writer's room. You have to bring in other writers. So what you would do in like maybe a year or two years, that's writing, going to reflect, coming back, writing, going to reflect. Then you have other people there. Mm-hmm doing it because if you're thinking from this angle somebody else will think from this angle yeah. another person will think from this angle so most Nollywood movies now even when one writer is contracted he doesn't really do it alone he puts together a writer's room collaboration yeah so the collaboration is mm. strengthening the industry you know then um apart from that like um people are willing to pay more money for good stories now because they have mm. realized that the gold is in the good stories and i would say that that is because of the international interference, where you have like um, international investors coming in, you have international platforms coming in. They don't want medio- mediocre stuff. Because when they make a Nigerian movie, they don't want only Nigerians to watch it. They want people from other countries to watch it. That's yeah. how they make their money. So then they're not going to pay you for something that is not up to par. Yeah. So I feel like that is also what has forced people's hands. So now writers are better paid than they used to. So then now you have people that really know the work. Because I remember somebody once made a statement when I was still working in banking. I went for a meeting, a pre-production meeting. And someone was like, why are all the good writers I know not in Hollywood? They're either in banking or they're in advertising, doing copywriting. And it's, and I replied that it's because Nollywood did not, as at the time, does not pay good money. Mm-hmm. And the person saw reasons with me. So the People that know their onions are now coming into the game. The people that are well equipped, the people that are well trained. So, because the industry is now willing to pay, so I would also say that um, that has contributed to the success and the growth of the industry. industry. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, that's nice. So in 2023, yes, what was your best movie 
Like if I can use, okay, can you give me your top three movies for 2023? Nigerian movies. Yeah, Nigerian movies, especially, especially when it comes to the storyline. Okay. Funny enough, um, most of them were not English-speaking movies. Oh. Yeah. I like him, um, Jago Jago, a lot. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! I thought I was the only yeah. one. Like when a I lot. watched that movie, I'm like... This is not the regular Nigerian yeah, movie was I, I was good. expecting. Yeah, it was nominated in the best screenwriting category. Too, Whoa! With Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> then I liked them. Um, I like most of the epics. Oh. And I'm not really an epic lover. Like, But for me to like the epics, like that means yeah. they are really good. Like, good. Yeah. yeah. How about this movie that was making the airwaves, um, Breath of Life? Yeah, Breath of Life was... Breath of Life is this year now. 2023, yeah, yeah, Breath of Life is my third one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Just that I've not watched that one, I've been postponing to watch, like... You should. Um, was, I will. It was I also will. nominated in yes, the best Yes, I heard a lot of review about that movie. Yeah, and it was amazing. I'm amazed why I've not gone to watch it. You should. I should, yeah, yeah. I will, I will. Wow, kudos to Femi Adebayo, yeah, for Jago Jago. Yeah, I he think he's produced, I think he produced and directed it, or he produced it, or... or yeah. Okay. They did a very great job in that yeah. movie. Yeah, very it was amazing. Job. Yes, even in their location and all of that. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you so much, Adora. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm not done because I still have one thing I want to ask, one or two things I would like to ask okay. before we'll, we'll call it a day for today. Okay. All right, right now, looking at the Nigerian industry, yeah. who would you like to work with? Because... <laughs> Okay, this is just my personal, my personal thingy. Like I've loved Moabudu yes. and um, this other lady, Bolanli Austin Peters. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So over the years, I've seen the way these women, Moabudu, Bolanli Austin Peters, have produced movies that are not irregular. Yes. You know, they, in short, I can say that they were the ones that started the not regular kind of Nollywood movies. Like, to me, oh, mm -hmm. I don't know about that, but I saw them bringing out another side in Nollywood because in Nollywood, we knew. You could tell the story. Once you just start the movie, you could you tell the remaining tell part happened. of the movie, what yes. would happen. But when they started bringing up new innovations into the movie industry, and I'm like, ah. This is unlike Nigerian movies, though, because I stopped watch watching Nigerian movies for a while. At some point. Uh, yes, at some point. I used to watch just the Nolly um, Hollywood movies, action movies. I love action movies. Mm -hmm. And then when I just stumbled on some advert, I'm like, uh-uh, in Nigeria, no, I have to I have watch to it. Yeah. And that's like having that love for it, because there was a time in the industry where it was all about love, 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 love. Yes. This guy will marry this guy. This guy will marry this yeah, guy. But so to be fair, they were trying to make their money, though. That was really? what was selling, yeah. Uh, uh, like, it was just so so everywhere, and I didn't like it. But right now, there's twists to their story, even if it's a love story, but then... There's much more. Yeah. So I would like to know who you would like to work with. Um, you can just say two persons, like, just... I can't say two uh, persons. I'll mention plenty. I'm not even going to mention, I'll just say everyone. <laughs> everyone. Because I know, yeah. I, I was just, in my head, the answer I was expecting is... She's not going to mention anybody. No, I will, I will just say everyone, <laughs> everyone that has a good story, All right. a, good, a good production. Like I'm really open to working on any kind of story, provided it's like oh. a positive story. Okay, okay. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do you have any latest projects you're working on at the moment? Okay. We just concluded principal photography for a Netflix license show. I said that, said that earlier yeah. on. Currently, I'm in the writer's room for... For a feature film for a production company, I'm not going to mention their name now, okay. but we have commenced working on another project. Hopefully, that is also very good. Then I'm also working on an um, a six-part series, like a six-part family drama. Oh. Yeah, we're in. We're, we're, cur we're currently kicked off with production. We're trying to tighten up the story and go into principal photography. Then. Um, I'm also trying to distribute a film I shot last year. Okay, what's yeah. the title? It's titled The Drive. Oh, yeah, okay. it's a drama. And also, like, um, I'm also, I have, like, two scripts more, which I'm trying to wrap up okay. and send off. So, like, I'm working on other projects, apart from wow. the fact I'm doing my trainings and whatnot, yes. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. All right. In this movie, you were nominated for as 
the best screenplay um screen screenplay yes screenplay yes so um what would you say about the movie okay. and um is are there voting things that one could vote for you okay and all of that so um what i'll say about the movie the movie is like I think it's a classic, and I'm not saying it because I worked on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I h honestly feel yeah. about what we have made, you know. Then, um, so I think it's timeless. I think at any time you play it to watch, you would always enjoy it, mm. you know, because I think it's like, I'll use the word timeless and vintage, you know. I think um, it also holds, has a lot of lessons. It preaches hard work, consistency, mm. It has several complicated plots. And so you see what people can do when they are pushed to the wall. Mm. You know, like, so we have the story of two brothers, two friends like brothers, who started off being perfectly good with each other. They were learning, they were Uma boys. They were learning f from their boss, Udugu, and everything is fine because the antagonist, Paul, he sees the protagonist as like, a men mentee, somebody he's teaching because he was there before him. But mm. when it gets to the point where you find out that that person under you is now like going to be above you, then yeah. the real human nature comes out like, okay, mm. really? Like, I don't want to give like spoilers, like, you know, but like the plot is like pretty, really nice. Somebody dies at the end of the film. But we started from the person dying and trying to figure out how the person died. Yeah, yeah. We'll have this. Um, love triangle between the two friends and their boss's daughter. So there's like a lot going on and it all came together to make like a very nice story and a very nice movie. And then I'm trying to remember your second question. Okay. About the voting links, yeah. yes. So the category I, I have been nominated for is not a voting category. It will oh. be decided by a panel. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of ca categories at the AMVCS this year. A lot of voting categories. I think they just they have about just five or six voting categories. Even the best actor, best actresses, yeah. they are not. It will be decided by a panel for reasons best known to AMVC. Perhaps they want a fairer verdict, okay. or maybe they are just changing their processes. Mm -hmm. But either way, I'm just still grateful to be nominated. You know, because yeah. the category in which I was nominated is a tight category, and if I can be recognized in that category, then it sort of gives some sort of validation for my craft. So. Yeah. I did not even dream of being nominated Aww. with those people. I used to look look up to like, oh, this is my my born like you know. Yeah. So yeah, I'm grateful to God like that. Aww. Thank God. Wow, wow. Yeah. Immediately, I heard that I've interviewed someone who was nominated for an award. You know, I was really really happy because mm. it's it's wanting to to do what you love is another thing for people to recognize what you do. Yes. Because that way, it's, it's not like it's, it makes you do it better or anything, but that way it makes you realize that what you're doing is very important yes. to humanity and yes. important to everybody and someone out there is watching. And, yes. you know, thank you so much, Adora, thank for you gracing for our me. screen today. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you. And for those of you upcoming script writers, um, would you like to teach them something or you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like be consistent, like um, believe. Like that's the hardest part of everything. Like just believing that um, this thing I'm just doing here like this now. Somebody will just believe in it and just put money on yeah. it. That's like the hardest part. Like having that belief, not even being good at it. So mm. you have to believe and then constantly develop yourself, self-development. Because writing is an academic career, even film. It's, it's like the academic part of film, like, because it involves like using your brain, yeah. putting together an academic document of a lot of pages, you know. So it is some sort of like, it is literature, it's just visual literature. So okay. you have to constantly study, take courses, improve yourself, go for trainings, go for workshops. Yeah. So the better you get as a writer, the more chances you have of being mm -hmm. successful at yeah. your craft and then networking, like, then just generally just be humble and be positive and or like always just talk to God like, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, talk to God yeah. like oh, God works. Like <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to get like preachy. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. 
God works. So what's your Instagram handle, your mm. Facebook handle, <laughs> your YouTube handle? Okay. So our followers can follow you. Okay. My Instagram handle is um, a a dot s dot adora day. That's a acronym abbreviation for my name. Okay. A S Adora. A dot S dot Adora. A D A O R A. Okay. But if you also type out my full name, Anya Sandra Adora, you find okay. me. Yeah. Then on Twitter, Queen Adora was I don't even know my Twitter handle. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not big on social media. I like literally I have to check. Yeah. My Twitter handle is at Queen Adora Seven. So I got okay. it. Okay, yeah. okay. At Queen Adora Seven. Yeah. All right. Thank you for watching till the end of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this show and you learned one or two from our guests today. You know, being a script writer, not be beans. You got to have a lot of intellectual knowledge because I'm still wondering in my head how Adora does all of this. However, I'm super excited to have hosted you, Adora, and I'm so Thank happy. You. Thank you for gracing our show once again. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And guess what? If you want to be on our show, all you just have to do is send us a DM and we'll get in touch with you. So we'll meet next week. Same time. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.